This is Disney Travel Tales, a trip report show helping you to become an expert at navigating your next Disney vacation. Join me every Friday for all things Disney related. Not traveling to Disney anytime soon? Never fear, we are still the show for you. Sit back, relax, and immerse yourself in someone else's trip. All the joy, none of the stress. All right, if you're ready, let's get to today's show. Hello and welcome to episode 112. I am here with Kira and we are going to talk about her amazing Disney trip she just went on. So welcome to the show. Why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and your experience with Disney vacations? Well, I'm Kira and I um I worked at Disney for a really long time, and I hadn't been since the 90s before that. So we went twice in the 90s when I was a kid, and I think it just stuck with me so much, just those two trips, and because we've been all kinds of other places, but Disney always, like, I would look at, like, our, um, like, our albums and stuff from that trip, so, like, it was just... It was something that stuck with me. And then I went to work there in 2014 because I did the college program. Mm -hmm. So I did that twice, and then I stayed down. And then when we moved up to Ohio here to live with family, I just missed it so much. So I was like, well, we have to go back. And then we kind of were going back on our own, and then I started with Trolley Lane with you and the rest of the girls. Um, And... So now there's lots more trips happening. Yes. It's so so funny how after you become a travel agent, you just want to go all the time. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, how do I, even for like Tiana's Bayou coming up, I'm like, I don't know when it's opening yet. Right. They haven't given like an official date, but I'm like, I just want to (laughs) go. Right. It's like, how can I get there? (laughs) Yeah. Like, Who else wants to go? Because I will be there. And whether on my own or with somebody else. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's so fun. So that's awesome that you did the college program. I'm, like, trying to brainwash my children to want to do that, to give me an excuse oh to go God. even more often and visit them. But we'll see how that goes. Yes, do it. Do it. They should do it. It's, I mean, first of all, like, my biggest plug for that would be you're putting a Fortune, not just a Fortune 500, but a Fortune 100 company on your resume. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I've gone that I've ever interviewed with is like, oh, you worked at Disney. They don't even care what I did. They're just like, you worked for Disney. I'm like, yeah, Yeah. (laughs) it's pretty cool. That is very cool. Okay. So let's talk about this trip. What were your travel dates and who did you travel with? So our official Disney dates were Saturday, March 23rd of this year, 2024, through um, Saturday, March 30th. Um, We did do some extra days of driving down, so Mm -hmm. totally uneventful. Yeah. Um, But all together as a family, we were there the 23rd to the 30th, and that was nine of us. That's so fun. So who were the nine? Me and my husband, John, and then our two and a half year old daughter, and then my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, then my brother-in-law, so John's brother and his wife and their two kids who their oldest, their daughter is six, and then their little boy is two and a half. Um, Actually, so the two cousins who are two and a half, they're two days apart in age, so they're more like twins. That's so so fun. That's awesome. Well, that is such a fun big group. I love it. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun and everything went really smoothly compared to how I thought a group of nine would go because yeah. you never know. So John and I and my daughter and my father-in-law were in one room and then my mother-in-law and my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and the kids were in another room. So it worked out really well because I was not quite sure how space would be. Right. So it did pretty good. So where did y'all stay? We stayed at Coronado Springs. Um, 
I had looked into Destino Towers, and I had also looked into Caribbean, but Caribbean Beach was having a pool renovation, and I was like, well, that's no fun. Mm -hmm. And Destino Towers just just a little more than I wanted to spend for spring break uh, Mm -hmm. time. So we were, they put us, like, right in the cabana section, so it was, like, really adjacent to Destino Towers. So we were in kind of a perfect spot where we were right by the main pool, that dig site, and right by the main buildings. Mm -hmm. So, like, either we crossed the bridge to go to the main building where, like, the cafeteria was, or we could go over to Destino Towers and go to that nice uh, Dahlia Lounge, and they have the Barcelona Lounge that had pretty good coffee. So nice. Yeah, that building is gorgeous. I love it. I'm so obsessed sweet. with it. Yes, and those rooms are so beautiful as well. I haven't stayed there yet. It's on my list. Hopefully soon. Yeah, I'm saving that one for like a girls trip where it's yeah. like just me and some girls and we do like the club level and then you get mm-hmm. kind of all the extra amenities. Yeah, so that's one cool thing about Coronado is even though it's a moderate resort, it does have the club level and it's actually a pretty affordable club level. It is. Like, I think, like, in their off-season, it's, like, 300 to 400 I forget. Yes. It's really great. It really is. Because you can make that food some of your meals, and then that takes away some of your additional cost. One of my friends who still works at Disney, she did that for her birthday at, I think, like, Wilderness Lodge. Uh-huh. She went and she, yep, they just went and they got all the food, and she's like, it's like I prepaid. It's like an all-inclusive. I was yeah. like, stop all. That's awesome. Yeah. So what kind of park tickets did y'all have? So we only did three day park hoppers. And the reason we did that is because we also wanted to build in some off time and we wanted to do a beach day and we wanted to do a sea world day. Fun. So kind of did every other day we did a park day. So obviously like the first day we got there, we just settled in and then we started the park stuff the next day. That's so. fun. So, yeah, so just your first day, what time did y'all arrive? Like, kind of how did that day go? So, John and I and my father-in-law and my daughter, we probably arrived somewhere between, like, 1 or 2 p.m. And they had our room ready, like, right away, because I had done all the online check-in, and I was, like, kind of surprised, and they got us in, like, such a perfect spot. Um, And, like, we were on the ground floor, so that was nice, too. Um, and I just had to go up and ask them if they could get my brother and sister-in-law's room somewhat close to ours. And they did. They got it like four rooms down, like just around the corner. So that was perfect. So the kids were happy. Yeah, that's really nice too, especially during spring break when it's typically busy. Sometimes those room requests just don't happen. Yeah. Well, they used to let you put a more specific request in. Mm -hmm. I remember this from like years ago. But now it's like you have to choose from like, you have two options, but you get to choose from like three options. Yeah, it's weird. (laughs) Yeah, it is definitely different. So Um, what did y'all do after y'all got there? Mostly we just unpacked and settled in and waited for the rest of the group to arrive. They, Because their flight landed at 3.30, but they had to go pick up their rental car and all that. You know, two kids and a whole lot of suitcases and a stroller, which now I will recommend Kingdom strollers to people. I'm like, just don't bring your stroller. You can get one there. Don't, don't bother. Um but so they didn't get to the resort until like 6 30 but the funny thing was they said that their experience at the airport versus once they immediately got on disney property it was like night and day (laughs) that nobody at the airport cared at all couldn't have cared less and then they got to Disney and everybody was bending over backwards to make sure they were happy and getting what they wanted and being helped and getting felt services for them and all that. And so just really, really good first impression because they've only been once before when my niece was about two and that okay. was when John and I got married. Uh-huh. So she doesn't remember anything. So this trip was all about her, right? Oh, Little that's so six year old princess. <laughs> That's so fun. Oh, yeah. The Disney bubble, when you're in Disney, you're treated like royalty most of the time. There are occasions where you might not be, but it is very different from the real world. 
Yeah, it definitely made me happy to know that, like, they were just, like, immediately impressed. And I was like, good, because now I can get you to take other trips. (laughs) Right? (laughs) You're like, my plan is working. (laughs) Okay, so let's just move into your first park day. What did y'all do? So our first park day I had booked, um, well, not booked really, but um, I was thinking reservations still. Right. Reservations, but we had a an early morning, like 8.20 reservation at the Crystal Palace. Um, so we went in early for early park entry and we grabbed some like really cute, like family castle photos because I had wanted to do Jungle Cruise, but they don't rope drop. Oh, <laughs> so that's yeah. uh, by the wayside but um it was nice because then like they kind of get to get the feel of magic kingdom with before all the crowds show up um and then yeah we had our crystal palace uh reservation and that went really really well the kids other than my daughter really enjoyed um winnie the pooh and friends which was kind of funny because My daughter had met Winnie the Pooh and friends before, but she has no recollection. And so this experience was, like, very different than our last one. Um, But my niece and my nephew, they were were just living it up. Um, Everybody really enjoyed the food. They've really made an improvement on that buffet. It's so great now. Um, And it's just a breakfast buffet? Like, what kind of foods do they have? They have, like multiple different kinds of eggs they've got their little like kids station which i love because you know the classic mickey waffles bacon cereal they've got all like different pastries and bagels and um they've got like the smoked salmon and cream cheese kind of thing going um and of course you know like a fruit uh bar Mm -hmm. for like yogurt and granola if you want to do that and then I think we all ordered some sort of like adult beverage because we were like this is nice let's relax into our day um first day going in so kind of take it easy so yeah it's nice to sit down and just like have a meal before you are in the craziness of the spring break crabs which weren't as bad as I thought oh good yeah I think we kind of went in that first week of spring break where it was actually a little better. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think. It definitely <laughs> like fluctuated. I saw some weeks were terrible. Some weeks were just, you know, regular Disney crowds. And then some, as it, you know, got towards the end, it was, didn't seem so bad. It's just so hard to predict. Yeah. Cause we, we didn't do genie plus on that first day. Cause I had really thought about it. And then, the night before I had, I, um, had been talking to my friend who still works at Disney and she was like, just play it by ear. She was like, it's your first day. Don't go in like, you know, rushing things, just like do what you can and get out because we wanted to take a break in the middle anyways, because a six year old and two, two and a half year olds, they can't make it a full yeah. day. We don't want to do that to them. For sure. So. After our Crystal Palace, I think we had gone over to Fantasyland, and I think our first ride, my niece wanted to get on Small World, so we did that, and that was really fun, because all the kids were, like, really happy, and, like, I didn't think that two-and-a-half-year-olds would react that much to it, but, Mm -hmm. like, both of our kids were just, like, fully locked in on these these dolls. And I was like, I never thought about it that way. So it's really fun to watch through another little person's eyes. Oh, my goodness. They're so – they just, like, they're looking all around. They're listening to the music. They love the music. I'm like, I've heard this a thousand times. And the repetition, they probably like that because, you know, a lot of kids' songs are just very repetitive. I've never thought about that either. Right? No, like, I think that's what I took from, like, this whole trip is it's so cool to watch through their Mm -hmm. eyes. And, like, you kind of feel like a kid again yourself a little bit. That's sweet. So, yeah, the the wait times were good um, because we... We also did Little Mermaid. I think we actually did Little Mermaid before we did Small World. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we had gone over to Little Mermaid, and 
that was super fun. I love that ride. I, I love singing too. along. My daughter doesn't want me to, but I do it anyways. <laughs> that is not a good <laughs> sign if at two and a half she already has that opinion. <laughs> As, oh, she's sassy. So sassy. Um, oh, my gosh. So, yeah. Yeah, we did Little Mermaid. Then we did um, Small World. And then I think we had gone over to do the carousel. Mm-hmm. So we got on the carousel because we kind of like just focused on like the little like fantasy land rides. Yeah. Uh, and I really wanted my niece to go to PhilharMagic because yes. I knew like she's she's really into all the Disney music and I knew that she would really enjoy that. Mm-hmm. Um, she tried to pull out the sword and the stone at one point. Didn't didn't happen for her, but I also brought her over to get pixie dusted over at Sir Mickey's because we had bought some dresses ahead of time but I think she was a little like shy to wear them mm-hmm. unfortunately so we, we didn't really get that on the first day but um then after doing a few rides we went over and we caught um Festival of the Fantasy like right right in the circle of the hub we were like uh-huh. kind of in between like the walkway from Fantasyland to the castle. And it was kind of a perfect spot because we just, you know, pick up all the kids, hike them up, and they get to watch and wave to all the characters. I miss the original Festival of Fantasy when it first came out. They took some characters out. I actually, that's something that I worked on. I helped the opening crew of Festival of Fantasy. So I always want people to see it because I'm like, this is just, this parade is amazing. I love that parade. It's beautiful. I love the costumes so I much. I do too. And I love the music. It's so such, such a fun parade to watch. It's very catchy. Yeah, it is. Um, and then I think we just got like, we grabbed like some Mickey bars and stuff like that. And we were having some snacks. And then we stuck around for the castle show. Uh-huh. And then after the castle show, we were like, okay, we can go take a break now. (laughs) So that was it for the first half of our day. Um, I can't remember. Did y'all drive to the parks or did y'all take the buses? So we drove to the park that first day because since we had that reservation, I didn't want to mess around with buses. I've always had good luck with Disney buses, but they do tend to run a little slower than if you were to drive ourselves. Mm -hmm. So... When we, we drove the cars, went to TCC, and my niece was, like, very insistent that we get on the monorail because she was like, I want to ride that. Uh-huh. Every kid, right, they see the monorail, and they're like, that's a Disney ride. Yeah. Um, so that was really cute. So I think we ended up taking the ferry back to TTC. It's much breezier. It was getting, getting pretty warm. Mm-hmm. So not unbearable, but definitely, like, I'm like, get – Peak of the day is a good time to go to the pool. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, we went back to the resort and we kind of unwinded a little bit. And then my niece and my brother-in-law and my mother-in-law and I, we all met up at the pool. And they were doing some of, like, the, like, poolside activities. Mm -hmm. And my niece is a very artistic little girl. She's so sweet. She loves to draw. She loves to paint. She loves to make things. And they were doing Mickey tie-dye that day. And I knew it because I had already looked up the schedule. And I was, like, kind of, like, trying to get her over there. And, like, the second she saw them setting up, she was like, what are they doing? I need to go do that. So she she got to make her a uh, Mickey tie-dye shirt. And That's that was really so cool. Fun. I've always wanted to do that, My like, have my kids do that. But we just never. I highly it. recommend it. It doesn't take long. It's, like, a 10, 15-minute process, mm-hmm. depending on how quick you are to get the dye on your T-shirt or pillowcase or um, what whatever they have at the time. Uh Um, But I actually used to set that up because I used to work in children's activities. And so my friend and I, that's how we met, was in children's activities. And we used to set up the Mickey tie-dye. And I owned, at one point, countless amount of um, Mickey (laughs) tie-dye shirts. But we always highly recommend it because it's just fun. Mm -hmm. It's something to do while you're not really doing much of anything. And kids really enjoy it because they like taking home something that they made. Yeah, it's a great souvenir. Yeah. That is fun. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah and then so, so we, we took, took a, a, a pretty good size break because I think we were all kind of feeling some of the crowds and the heat mm-hmm. and in the evening we headed to Epcot um, and we just kind of wanted to hop on maybe a ride or two and do the world showcase this is where we had our first like actual kind of like snafu which isn't really a snafu it was just kind of funny my husband is insistent that we go on spaceship earth it's one of his favorite rides so we get on spaceship earth right the wait time's perfect everything's fine and then we got stuck on spaceship earth for like i don't know maybe 10 minutes (laughs) And I was just sitting there, and I was like, of course, Mm -hmm. of course your favorite ride would slow me down somehow. Right, and it's so stuffy in there. (laughs) It is. Like, we, I think we got caught right between one of those scenes where they have that, like, fake smoke smell, and I'm like, oh, gosh, no. It doesn't smell like the the nice rum smell of Pirates of the Caribbean. Right. It's like, like, (laughs) it hits you in the back of the throat feeling. Oh, yeah. But. It was still fun. I still love that ride. It's so funny. I have, like, the same set of rides that I always get stuck on. That's one. Pirates of the Caribbean used to be one. Used to be Slash Mountain. Hopefully Tiana's by you will not get stuck. Yes. (laughs) Um, And then... So after that, we just kind of hung around in that little, um, it's not really an exhibit area, but it's like that sort of like interactive space where there's, you can kind of like drive, yeah. pretend to drive a car and they have like something that looks like shuffleboard, which every time I look at it, I'm like, I really need to go over there, but there's always somebody using it at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, Hi, this is Jenny, just popping on with some exciting news. I've started a Facebook group just for you. I'm really excited about this because not only will this be a great opportunity to get to know each other, but this is also a safe space to talk all things Disney. Members can share travel tips, resort tips, likes and dislikes, and the best part is this will give you an opportunity to talk to the guest on the show and ask them questions about their trips. I was trying to think of a fun name for us, and Disney Travel Tales Podcast Clubhouse came to mind. This is a private group, and of course, I will not allow anyone to be bullied or talked down to. I just want this space to be positive and fun. Check the show notes for a link to join, or just search Disney Travel Tales Podcast Clubhouse in Facebook. I can't wait to see you over there. Hey, it's Jenny just popping on real quick. Make sure to stay up to date with all things Disney news, all things Disney Universal cruising related by following me on Instagram at Disney Travel Tales. You can also find me on Facebook at Disney Travel Tales as well. If this episode is making you want to plan a Disney vacation, then I would love to help you. All of my services are completely free to my clients, so there really is no reason not to use a travel agent. Most people don't realize that when you go and book your own Disney vacation, you are already paying that travel agent fee. So why not take advantage of that and get all of those services that you're already going to be paying for? I would love to help you plan your next trip. So make sure to check the show notes for information on how to get in contact with me, my quote form, my email, and yeah, let's make 2024 the year you go to Disney. And then we headed into the World Showcase because we wanted to try some of the flower and garden food and kind of look around all the topiaries. And we were pretty much mostly there for fireworks at that point. Mm-hmm. So fireworks were at nine. Yeah, because we, we got to, I think we got to Epcot like after six. So we really mm-hmm. didn't have that much time. And I think what I discovered was with nine people, you kind of have to slow down a lot, especially with like two strollers and a six-year-old. And I was like, 
Oh, this is not the Disney I'm used to, but it was also fun because it gave me an opportunity to, like, look at all the things I don't usually, like, pay attention to, like, For little sure. details. Um, yeah, so we, we pretty much had dinner in the World Showcase, got a few different things. I'm trying to remember what we tried. I know that John and I had gotten two of the things from the France booth, <laughs> and those were really good. Actually, that was my favorite thing that I tried. Was like, it was like a little little cake, and I can't remember what the flavor was, but it was it was really delicious. I would have to look up the what it was oh my goodness um and john john got like the the cheese um croissant uh-huh. and that was really good maybe a little too much cheese for me i don't like that much cheese all at once um and then we had to go find the kids food which of course in the world showcase is a little difficult so we ended up over by like the america pavilion and just went into like regal eagle smokehouse and got you know your basic chicken tenders and mac and cheese yeah um and then we kind of just wandered around the pavilions and waited for the fireworks to start and they they really enjoyed that i don't like the new fireworks luminous as much as I like harmonious. I want them to bring back harmonious, but yeah, that's I, just my personal opinion. Well, it's just like a regular fireworks show. Like there's nothing mm-hmm. that necessarily makes it stand apart. Like, you know, Hollywood yeah. studios has phantasmic, which is like a different type of show because magic yeah. kingdom has the fireworks show. So yeah, like harmonious was interesting and different and so upbeat i felt mm-hmm. like all the music in harmonious was way more upbeat but i do really like they have like some water colors kind of happening mm-hmm. on the on the um lagoon there and then where did y'all watch the fireworks i know with this show it doesn't I necessarily think they were matter over like in the italy section because okay. you know how like right by the water it kind of like divots out a little bit yes. And so there's kind of a little more space Mm -hmm. over back there. Um, So we were able to get up pretty close because we kind of picked out a spot pretty early. Um, And really not even that early because it's not like Magic Kingdom fireworks where people will like stake a spot for hours. Like I think we were there maybe like 15 minutes early and like we had like some like desserts and stuff. That's fun. And um, got like a drink or two. Um, and then, yeah, so that was that was how we finished our day was with the fireworks. And that's that's always special to me, like finishing like a Disney day with a show, yes. especially a fireworks show. They're, uh, they're pretty cool. Like, like I get really emotional during the holidays. So same. Was... My kids think I'm crazy. <laughs> right. Like my John's looking at me and he's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I just. So many memories. Yeah, it's just like, so mind your business. It turns up a lot. <laughs> they, they know how to, they're very, um, their creative team is very good at pulling people's little heartstrings. Absolutely. <laughs> they, yes. They have talent for sure. They do. And they're very good at it. And I hope it stays that way because I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. So what time do you think y'all got back to your resort this night? Um, so, cause we had taken the bus. This is when we okay. took the bus for the first time and the bus getting there was great. Mm-hmm. The bus getting back, not so fun. Cause like we kind of left with all that influx of, of, um, fireworks viewers and we ended up on a bus pretty, it was pretty packed. Mm-hmm. And I think that's when, um, my in-laws all experienced their first Disney kind of like, oh, this isn't so fun. Yeah. Like, not horrible. They, you know, we all know that everything's good. Like, you can't go wrong with Disney cast members. They're pretty great. Um, but being packed into a bus right after fireworks, like, John and I, when we were going, when it was, like, just the two of us, we always used to wait like a couple mm-hmm. hours just like so let everybody leave and then we would leave because they kind of like you get funneled out right yeah. you start pushing people out of world showcase and out of um world discovery um but like the stores stay open like what like an hour after mm-hmm. and so like you don't technically have to leave immediately um, but with like little kids, we wanted to get them back, get them in bed. 
because even though we didn't have a park day the next day, we still kind of had a busy day with a, a longer drive. Um, so, but it was fine. It's just one of those things you, you just either get used to it and you decide whether or not that's something you want to do in the future. Um, so. Yeah, and in the moment, it really is about managing your own personal attitude. I struggle with this. I get so annoyed standing and waiting for the bus that I really have to stop and remind myself it's not that big of a deal. Like, we'll get back. It'll be fine. But it it really makes me mad. (laughs) It brings out the worst in me. And I don't act out. It's just all internal. (laughs) Right? It's that sort of, like, built-up frustration. It's like, our wait time wasn't bad for the bus. Like, I think we waited less than 10 minutes. But it was once we got on the bus and there were so many people. Yes. And, like, there's going to be miscommunications and misunderstandings. And, like, you know, everybody's trying to just get back to their resort, get back into their bed, get right. their kids back into, into bed and get ready for their next day, whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. And so like, there's just, (laughs) everybody's a little tense at that point. Yes. So I think I would do that again if I was with other people. Like my friends don't like the Disney buses and I'm like, I've never had a problem, but probably because I wasn't with other people. Right. For sure. So. So, We don't have to go like into detail on what y'all didn't or what y'all did on your non-Disney days, but what did you do on this day? So me and John and my daughter, we actually had kind of a fun day because we didn't go to the beach. We were going to, but we also had plans with some family of mine who lives in Cocoa Beach. Uh Um, And so we went to visit them and it was really nice because I hadn't seen them in quite a while. They hadn't met my daughter yet. So we kind of got to like catch up and um, have a really nice visit. My daughter did so beautifully with them because sometimes she can be a little cagey, Mm -hmm. um, obviously two and a half. Um, And then the rest of the family just went to Cocoa Beach, which because they were like, oh, should we go to Clearwater? And we're like, don't go to Clearwater. (laughs) Don't do it. Cocoa Beach is so much more, like, laid back and calm. It is an older crowd, but, like, they're so much more just chill, mm-hmm. which is perfect for, for little ones, I think. And the water at Cocoa Beach is, is nice. I mean, you can't really go wrong with any Florida beach. They're all pretty pretty great. So. Yeah, it's, it is. A, we went a couple years ago, and we enjoyed it. Um, how far of a drive was it for, from Orlando? Because I actually have people ask me all from the time. From Coronado to where we were going in Cocoa Beach, it was about like an hour and a half. Oh, that's driving. not bad. And that's like with a little bit of traffic. Mm-hmm. Um, so three hours total there and back. Um, we used to do it all the time because when we lived over in like Kissimmee, Orlando area, like we used to go to um Cocoa Beach because you can see the rocket launches from there and we've seen some really cool ones. That's awesome. So I think in the future we'd want to do that where we bring the kids out when it matters to them. Yeah, right. A two and a half year old isn't gonna care. Or remember. <laughs> no, like we watched the um solar eclipse and like neither of the two and a half year olds watch and yeah. my niece like she was really into it, and then she lost interest, and so, they, like, her parents had to, like, clue her in as to, like, when to look up <laughs> right. with her glasses, of course. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That was such a great day. <laughs> well, that's super fun. Um, okay, so what did y'all do on your third day, your second park day? So, on our second park day, we did Animal Kingdom in the morning, and we didn't have any reservations, but... Um, I did Genie Plus, and we did, we took the bus um, to Animal Kingdom because I think we didn't want to deal with walking through that parking lot, Mm -hmm. and we did know that coming back, like, it wouldn't be, like, the previous park night coming back on that Epcot bus after fireworks. Mm -hmm. Um, So we were actually in Animal Kingdom for a while because we got there right around, like, 8 o'clock for park opening we were there like a little bit before that because um I wanted to make sure we got in at a, at a pretty decent time and we were there until like 2 p.m I think. wow that's awesome yeah um I for so for that day we had genie plus and 
the very first lightning lane I had booked us was Kilimanjaro Safaris, which I was super excited about. And then I think there was like almost a two hour period where it went down. Really? Yes. That super doesn't happen very often. Crazy bummer. Um, but in the meantime, we had gone over to Dino Land. My niece and nephew had gotten on Triceratops Spin, and we had waited for Moana meet and greet because um, that's my daughter's like absolute favorite mm-hmm. Disney movie. Um, <laughs> she got really shy, but I think next time she'll be more more um interactive with her but I think like the anticipation like made her just sort of close in and it was kind of like sweet and sad at the same time yeah um that's just such an unpredictable age with characters it really is yeah. it's so so funny because like on a different day we met some princesses and she really loved that mm-hmm. <laughs> a lot so yeah from then from Dino Land we we had headed over to Africa because we were waiting for that um, lightning lane to start. Um, and we had done the Gorilla Falls expedition because that's always a fun trail. And mm-hmm. on our way into Animal Kingdom, we had pull- picked up one of those um, Wilderness Explorer guides. Uh-huh. So my niece like locked into that. And I was like, perfect, because it's busy. There's lots of people. I don't know how much we're going to be able to accomplish. She would have been happy to just complete that book and do nothing else. So that was really wonderful. So Um, can we, let's talk a little bit about this book, because I've actually never had anyone on who's uh, had a kid with them that did it. So what kind of activities does it involve for like, and like what age do you think is appropriate? I would probably say anywhere from like five to 10. Okay. Um, yeah, under five, I would say they might not quite catch on unless they're like a sort of more advanced, hyper focused kind of under five. Mm-hmm. Um, but you go around Animal Kingdom and there are spots in all the lands. So there's spots in Africa, there's spots in Asia, Dino Land, and you collect badges. But in order to collect badges, you have to go and you have to interact with a cast member who's a wilderness explorer, right? They've got their cute little mm-hmm. wilderness explorer costume. And they're going to teach you about something about nature and animals and something Animal Kingdom related. Um, So you kind of have to go find them. You have to pay attention to your surroundings a little bit more. And for my niece, she is that kid. She will hyper-focus on something. She got that book and she was flipping through it, looking at the map, telling us where all the spots to get badges were. And... Definitely, like, some reading ability helps Mm -hmm. because definitely it's more informational. It's not just, like, a picture book that you get. Um, So, yeah, she just was so locked into it. And I was like, now I get why they do this because I pick them up all the time just to, like, give them to people who Uh are thinking about Uh Disney. And I'm like, if you have kids, like, this is something that you can do while you're there because a lot of people are like, Animal Kingdom, there's only, like, what, like, seven rides? It's the least rise of all the parks. Mm-hmm. It is. So um, it's something else. That, and it's so easy to do when you're, like, on your way from one spot to mm-hmm. another. So, like, when we were going through that whole, like, gorilla expedition, there's a couple spots in there. And also, like, it kind of gets you to just interact with the, the cast members and talk to them. And they know a lot. Like, they know about, like, Every baby that has been born in this park, like even my best friend, she actually works in Animal Kingdom. She's um, she's a character attendant and she she will tell me all about the babies and all about everything that's going on in Animal Kingdom. And I'm like, that's just really cool. It's like having a nice but like really Disneyfied zoo in your backyard. That's so. really cool. I love it. How fun. Well, that's great. Yeah, I am. Ha- my cousin is actually traveling to Disney this summer with his boys, and I think they're like seven and five. So I'm definitely going to recommend that to him. Yeah, especially if they, they like, if they're like really kind of curious minds mm-hmm. and like learning things. They'll yeah. latch on to it. And even just, it's the collecting things too. Yeah. So, like, kids love to collect stickers. They love to collect pins or, like, the press pennies. Yep. Um, 
that's that's an easy thing for them to sort of get like honed in on. That's really fun. Yeah, and teach them something. And then, like, <laughs> absolutely, it's a win-win for everyone. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, we went through the gorilla expedition, and uh, my niece was working on her wilderness explorers. And we were still waiting for that lightning lane. And while we were kind of going through there, I was the one, you know, on the phone monitoring everything so that nobody else had to look at it. And that's when I saw that um, the uh, Kilimanjaro safaris had gone down. And then immediately, like, it gave us a redemption. So something must have happened. I'm like, who knows? It could be any number of things it could be one of the vehicles something Mm -hmm. on on one of the pathways um so we used our redemption for festival of the lion king which i felt like was a pretty solid choice because that show is like probably my favorite show in animal kingdom it's always very lively i like how they get like the audience to kind of participate and Mm -hmm. be kind of silly um, and like sing along and just the performers in that show are amazing like amazing. the tumbling monkeys and those two dancers that they have that they attach her to the like fly line and then the guy with the fire always the guy with the fire I'm just like wow it is <laughs> an amazing just, show performers. and for it's it just so... to be included with entry is it's so worth seeing I mean it's like a 25 minute show but it very much feels like a mini broadway production yeah. of sorts and i'm just like even like my my in-laws were saying to me they're like wow like i hope like they're like they probably don't get paid enough i was like <laughs> been, been connected to, well because my first job at disney i worked in costuming so i worked with a lot of performers mm-hmm. so you hear a lot of stuff they definitely don't. Um, they do it. They do it because they love it, mm-hmm. and they love what it means to people. Yeah. So, like, fully invested. It's like they they are putting their heart into that 365 days a year, yeah. and it's just fantastic to watch them. That's very true. I love it. Yeah. Um. So after well, after festival Lion King, I'm trying to we. I don't, I don't think we we didn't go on any more rides that I remember because Expedition Everest none of the kids are tall enough for Mm -hmm. and none of my in-laws had that much interest in that we didn't we never went over to Pandora because again totally lost on the kids and this trip was mainly about them right um so I'm trying to remember what we did um, I think we just kind of wandered around Animal Kingdom a little bit, looking at all the, the different animals in the area. Um, and, uh, like, so Animal Kingdom was really busy that morning. Mm-hmm. Like, most of the, the wait times were pretty crazy. Um, and because there's, like, the Finding Nemo show that we could have done, and we could have done Feathered Friends in Flight, but we kind of surpassed on that, and I think everybody was getting a bit hot and tired already. So we went and had a very slow lunch at Flame Tree Barbecue. Um, but that was, it was nice because my friend was working that day, and she found a table for us right along the water. So if you go all the way into the back of Flame Tree Barbecue, there's this beautiful little corner that you wouldn't think of. And it's just right along the water, and you can see all the flotillas and the character um, boats go by. Oh, it's and so, so that fun. was really cool because, like, some of them, like, they're playing music, or there's just, um, let's see, there's, like, the dark winged duck, right? Uh huh. Mm-hmm. From DuckTales. Yeah. yeah, the ducks from DuckTales. They're really cute. I haven't thought about that show in, like, so long. <laughs> but, like, Disney brought back the characters, and I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah. Um, Did y'all enjoy your food that y'all got? I love Flame Tree Barbecue. Their food is really good. I always get the mac and cheese with the pulled pork and the coleslaw, mm-hmm. and that has, like, onion rings on top, and they give you, like, the barbecue sauce. Mm-hmm. Um Always really good. And actually, John and I had the quick service meal plan. Oh, nice. Um, so we were using that, and we were pretty happy with it. But I will say that my thing is that if you don't drink 
right? If you're not going to drink on your vacation or if you have any dietary needs, I would never do it. Yeah. But since we don't have any of those, like, restrictions, it's pretty great because you can get an adult beverage. And that, like, really kind of, like, makes your points worthwhile. Oh, yeah. It really does. Yeah. Like, it kind of makes your vacation a little more fun, too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because you're like, I'm going to have a drink at lunch. It's vacation. It's like, it's lunch. Have a drink. Actually, John was, like, stacking up alcoholic beverages in, like, that little, like, cooler in the room. Because every time he was like, well, I can just get a drink and I'll drink them as I want them. Yeah. It's funny because neither of us are big drinkers. We Mm -hmm. really aren't. Like, we hardly ever keep anything in the house. But when we're on vacation, we want to enjoy something. Absolutely. Vacation, yeah. everything's off. Like, there's no rules. You do what you want. <laughs> Pretty much, right? It's kind of it's really nice to do that. Yeah. So we really, I don't think we accomplished nearly as much as I wanted to that morning, and yet we were there for like such a chunk of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like, just wandering around the animal kingdom can be really nice because there's there's a lot to look at. There's a lot to kind of take in. And I think like a lot of people miss like all the animals like in the Oasis exhibits and the exhibits around the the tree of life. Um, so I got to walk around there a lot. And then after after we had lunch, my daughter had fallen asleep. And we were like, okay, we got to get her back to the room. We were going to take a break anyways. Um, so we bust back. And I think she stayed asleep from the time before we left Animal Kingdom until, like, later that afternoon. Like, it was, like, early evening. And she was just it, – it was too much. Yeah. She was um, – so, because that evening we were going to Hollywood Studios, because I, that's where I had really been, like, stacking up on our lightning lanes for the day, because mm-hmm. I was trying to get us on some Toy Story rides and some Star Wars rides, um, and we had wanted to do, like, Frozen Sing Along and all that. So, John and my daughter and my father-in-law never ended up joining us at Hollywood Studios, unfortunately. They were just like, we're tapping out. It's yeah. Fine. Um, which is good. It's like sometimes you just gotta call it. <laughs> that is one hundred percent true. But so I think yeah. So me and my brother in law, my sister in law, and my mother in law, and then my niece and nephew, we bust over to Hollywood Studios, and I think we got there like right around like four o'clock. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because we actually. We went from Animal Kingdom to Hollywood Studios. We never ended. We oh, decided okay. we were like we still had stamina. We were going um, probably because we hadn't really like done too too much in Animal Kingdom. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we bust right over to Hollywood Studios. We probably got in right around four, and we went straight over to Frozen Sing Along because I was like air conditioning. Yeah. <laughs> While we wait for the lightning lanes that I have stacked up for us, let's go get some air conditioning. Yes. Perfect choice. Yeah. Um, Like, we did have to wait a little bit to go in, but they have, like, they always have some way of making waiting less horrible. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They've got, like, the little TV screens up there, and you can sit on that little, like, sloped area and just watch some videos, Mm -hmm. and so, like, kids are fine. Um... And then the Frozen sing-along is just so much fun. I I highly recommend that to, like, every adult. Because I'm like, okay, you're going with your kids. Your kids love Frozen. But you're also going to get a comedy routine that is going to go completely above their heads. But you'll get it because it'll all be, like, pop culture references and a little bit more adult jokes without giving any notion to a kid understanding that. I know it's the best part. It's so oh my god that the the two um what do they call them the the royal historians uh-huh. they were phenomenal. Like I I was just falling out of my chair laughing. Mm-hmm. That's great. <laughs> like all the kids around us are singing and I'm just like in stitches. Yeah. 
And I, my, I kept looking over at like my brother-in-law, and he was having a great time too, because it's like, yep, this is this is hysterical. Like, who knew, right? We all like, you know, if you go, but if you don't go, you don't know that that's what you're gonna get. Yeah. And then you're just like, some adults are like, I just don't want to go watch Frozen, and you're like, no, go watch it. You're yeah, like, it. it's not, it's like, not your regular. I love the Beauty and the Beast show, but I'll pick Frozen sing along over Beauty and the Beast live on stage because Beauty and the Beast live on stage is just a short retelling. There's nothing added. Mm-hmm. This puts like sort of a funny, quirky Disney twist on things. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's so fun. Yeah. So that was, that was really a great way to sort of transition from being a little overdone, get some AC, get a good laugh in. And so, like, right next to Frozen Sing Along, they have the Olaf meet and greet. So um, we decided to get in that line for my niece because she loves Frozen and loves Olaf. In fact, she had actually wanted my brother-in-law and sister-in-law to name her baby brother Olaf. (laughs) That is not his name, but they told her that that could be her special name for him. I think she was just forgotten, but I still remember because I just thought it was the funniest thing because she was like really on a frozen kick and was like, I need him to be named Olaf. Okay. That's amazing. Yeah. So she, she really loved that. And they have now, you know how like the, um, instead of like a photo pass person, they have like the photo pass like kiosk mm-hmm. and it's just like the machine that takes the photo. So I didn't realize that they had changed that over because I don't usually focus on meet and greets. Mm-hmm. So it was really cool to see that. Um, I like, I don't entirely know how to feel about them, but I think they're kind of cool in a way. Um, so yeah, that, that took up probably the most of our time because when we got in line, the wait was short and then the wait had kind of built up, but totally worth it um that's fun yeah and then from there we had gone over to Muppets 3D because my brother-in-law is a huge Muppets fan and I kept telling him I'm like don't worry we will get over to those Muppets (laughs) (laughs) like whatever we gotta do we're not gonna skip the Muppets um, so that was cute and fun. That show, it, I, I mean, I think that's the show that I go into when, like, I'm like, I don't know what else to do. I'll go watch yes. the Muppets because I grew up with them. It's just um, silly. It's still cute. I love the little bunny beans. Oh, yeah. Why is he so cute? So cute. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, um, but then after that, we had a Star Tours lightning lane. Um, it was hard to get, like, any of, like, the really big rides. Mm-hmm. But Star Tours, I feel like for six-year-olds, is a pretty good intro to a Star oh, Wars yeah. ride, especially because it's the original Star Wars ride. So we yeah. really enjoyed that. Um I was kind of nervous at first because, like, kind of, like, her first, like, sort of more um, thrill ride of mm-hmm. sorts. Not really a super thrill, but for a six-year-old, that's pretty, that's pretty big. Well, it is. It's um, real jerky. She, so that can sometimes be like, very yeah. jerky. And I'm, like, sometimes I'm, like, not so good on it because it's, like, very – it's just a little too much jerking. Plus, with, like, the the visuals yes. with the 3D glasses and all that, I get a little disoriented coming off. I'm, like – okay but yeah no she loved it she got off and she was like that was so cool and I was like okay worth it (laughs) done and she doesn't even know about the other Star Wars stuff we'll save that for when she's older right (laughs) and then we went over to um Toy Story Land from there and we did Alien Swirling Saucer, which was good for my nephew because he was just tall enough. That was really fun, getting to have, like, that first, like, Disney, like, height measurement. And it's like, wait, you need to come stand over here. And, like, they kind of look at it like, okay, but my head's touching it. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> so that was really fun. Um, the the weights were definitely, like, even with the lightning waning, were kind of, like, slowed down because – Goodness knows, March, spring break, things are happening. Yeah. Um, so I felt like we got pretty lucky because we ended up, I had another lightning lane for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. 
because I had really wanted to do that with them. I think that mm-hmm. red is really cute, a lot cuter than people give it credit for. Um, but we ended up getting a redemption for that one. So two redemptions one day. Wow. Uh, so we ended up using it at Midway Media. And when we got into the queue, everything was, like, flowing perfectly. We were, like, basically a walk-on. And then we're, like, waiting, like, right at the ride vehicle, and something had stopped. So they actually, they were so efficient. They took us out of the queue, put us back, because you know how there's, like, two tracks mm-hmm. for Waymania? So they just brought us right over to, like, the, the other track. Oh, and nice. we went pretty quickly. And the kids loved that, because interactive ride what could be better than that i'm so That's bad at that good. ride but i still love it it's oh, so much fun. it's so much fun and it's fun as your kids get older because we're very competitive and so it's right? like who's gonna <laughs> win like with john because he always gets these ridiculously good scores <laughs> and i'm just like i can't with you because i want to be the best in vehicle not the worst uh-huh. <laughs> and then like um, my mother-in-law, because we were in the car together, and she was like, this is really good for, like, some stress relief. And I was like, I know, <laughs> right? Like, you can just get on this ride, and you're smiling, you're happy, and there's Toy Story characters, and you're also doing a little stress release. <laughs> that's, that's great. Yeah. I love it. Mm-hmm. And then after that, we kind of just called it a night and kind of slowly made our way out of the park. Um, we had thought about staying for Fantasmic, but we kind of missed our window to get to the earlier show, mm-hmm. and they didn't think the kids were going to make it for the later show. So hopefully Fantasmic will be around for a while. Yeah, I can't imagine it I, won't be. I, I that show. Yeah. It's so popular. People love that show. It's huge. I remember like when they finally like reopened, and I think I was there like right around reopening, and people were just, like, so ecstatic. There were so many people. Like, you had to get in that line so early. Yeah. But it's worth it. That shows. I actually did a backstage tour on that ride. Or not oh, ride. Fine. Backstage on the show once. So while I was a, a college program kid, um, I took a, a class that was about, like, Disney entertainment. Mm-hmm. And so they gave us a backstage tour on Fantasmic. One of the coolest things I've ever done. It was really neat. Um, That is really cool. I don't know if they ever do that for, like, anything outside of college program. But if ever they did, I'd be like, I want to go again. (laughs) Well, you know, I've heard from other um, cast members that every now and then they'll open up certain rides that you can do, like, like they'll do Haunted Mansion where you can go through with the lights on. Yeah, that one's really cool, too. I love that. So, it's so much I think fun. that that's a fun little park. Yeah. Getting to work there. It really is. <laughs> I'm like, if only they had one in Ohio. <laughs> right. <laughs> too. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of our night. And then we, we reunited with the rest of the family. And I think we had, like, a really late dinner that night. Mm-hmm. But because it's nice, like... Um, the food court is open like till 11 so like if you're just getting back from a park kind of late and it's still open like it's kind of a nice time to go it's not as busy um and I kept I kept waiting for them to have this salmon dish right they have like a rotating sort of menu where they have like some like sort of more sit down entree kind of things and Mm -hmm. I think one was like chicken and I can't remember what some of the other ones are, but I was obsessed with getting this salmon. They didn't have it till like the last night we were there. Dang it. But at like, least they got okay, it. I was like going to check. So. Yeah, My son was, loves the salmon at Disney. Disney. Yeah. And while we were like in Hello Studios, like my um John and my daughter had like gone to the pool. So he had like sent me all these pictures of her like jumping into the water and stuff. And I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I missed that. She my brave little child. That's such a fun pool, so I bet she enjoyed it really that. Is. It's so cool. Yeah, and it's they have such a nice setup. Um, because normally when I've stayed at Coronado, I've only gone to the quiet pools mm-hmm. and never like the main pool. But like I like how they have like um, you know, the main pool's pretty big and then they've got like a campfire and they've got all like the playground and stuff to the one side over closer to where like the um, pool bar is like there's a lot going on there especially for a moderate like Mm -hmm. that slide is not it doesn't feel like a moderate resort at all Mm -hmm. 
No, not at all. Well, it's funny. When I did a VIP tour a couple years ago, I asked our tour guide, what's your favorite resort on Disney property? And she said Coronado. That's so funny because a lot of people don't think to go there because yeah. they're like, there's a monorail. There's no skyline. Yeah. There's only the buses. It's really big. Or like, um, I mean, it does attract a lot of like the convention center mm-hmm. guests. But, like, that's only certain times a year, yeah. and half the time you wouldn't even know they were there, unless there's, like, hordes of them, which right. usually there aren't, because if there's a convention, they're on the convention building, and you're not going to be in there unless yeah. you're at the convention, or the cheerleading. They always do the cheerleading and the dance competitions, I think, mm-hmm. in Colorado, oh, which is really cool. Yeah, she said it was uh, just the vibe of it, the restaurants. It does have some fantastic food, and then the <sighs> pool. She's like, it's my favorite. Yeah, I that was it's, so funny. It's very laid back. I like a good laid back Disney resort. Yeah. So, um, what did y'all do on y'all's next non Disney day? So, our next non Disney day, so that would be our fourth day, right? Mm-hmm. Fourth day total. Um, we went to SeaWorld and we kind of took our time getting there because we, I think we literally bought the tickets like that morning. Mm-hmm. And we actually got a really good deal because um, John is former military, he's retired now. And so they have military price tickets and amazing during spring break. So, that's really cool. So, nice. like, Definitely keeping that in my on my radar um, that they don't really do block out dates for those tickets. So we got our tickets that morning, and I think we got to SeaWorld around like maybe like ten o'clock, mm-hmm. um, and it was pretty busy. But we got there like right in time to do the dolphin show to see that. Mm-hmm. And that is just so cool. I am obsessed with animals. I love animals. Um, My daughter really likes every animal she sees. So this was, like, way more exciting for her. So this was kind of, like, (laughs) very much my favorite day, even despite the fact that it was a non-Disney day. That's cool. Because my daughter was way more active, way more responsive. Um, every time the dolphins did something, she was like just glowing. <laughs> so Aww, it was really cool. that's sweet. Yeah, she's adorable. Um, and so we saw the dolphin show. Um, we didn't do any rides, but we went over to um, Sesame Street, the little Sesame Street landing. And my niece and my nephew met Cookie Monster, which is really cute. <laughs> my daughter ran towards him and then ran away. It was like, nope. <laughs> Not today, sir. <laughs> Not happening. Which is kind of funny. <laughs> but That's also, great. like, oh, you poor thing. You'll be okay. Yeah. Um, and then they had really wanted to see the Sesame Street Parade. Um, and that looked really cute from a distance. My daughter found the splash pad that they have over there. And she could have stayed there all day. Didn't care about anything else. Yep. That splash pad was her home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And it's just really cute the way they have it set up because there's, like, a couple, like, little kitty rides and then they've got, like, a cute little playground. And it's also really well set up for families because they have, like, a building back behind there that's, like, sort of kind of the SeaWorld equivalent of um, Disney's, um, yeah, it's, like, the baby center. Yeah. Uh, so SeaWorld has that over back there, like Sesame Street landing area. And so that was like really nice because we did not bring a swimsuit for our child. I thought about it. I was like, we might need, she might need it. And then we were like, no, I was like, I can just change her clothes. So <laughs> that's, that's good to know that that's back there. Um And then we went and we did, we watched the Orca show. Mm-hmm. So amazing. So, like, I think because, like, we weren't planning on staying very long after that, we were kind of like, okay, we've gotten our money's worth. We can go now. Um, And actually, it's a good thing we did because it was the sky was opening up. It was getting really dark, really cloudy. It was it was just very overcast and you could just feel it in the air that day that, like, it was going to rain, whether you liked it or not. Yeah, um, but it's nice because uh, rain always like cools things down usually. Yeah, it does. So, I think 
Yeah, we must have headed out of SeaWorld around, like, 4 o'clock. So, for six hours, doing two shows and kind of hanging around Sesame Street. Oh, we also, we walked through the, the shark exhibit. Mm-hmm. We did that, too. And that's fun. Um, oh, this kind of freaks me out. Like, I know that glass is perfect. <laughs> but I'm like, what if? Yeah. No, stop thinking about that. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. I'm just like, I know it wouldn't break. But what if it did break when I'm here? Like standing right in it. I just have a lot of what if scenarios with things that have really sharp teeth. And like my daughter loves sharks like a lot. That's funny. But I'm not sure she was so sure about seeing them so up close. Yeah. (laughs) But we had also, I think right after we'd seen the dolphin show, we had gone over and we had seen the dolphin nursery. So they have all the baby dolphins. Aww. And we have the cutest pictures of all three of our kids laying on the ground, like faces almost pressed up against that glass, just like waiting for these dolphins to swim by, like That's waving sweet. to the dolphins, saying hello to them. It was really cute. That is really sweet. Oh, yeah. Definitely, like, I, I think I like SeaWorld because it is so much more chill than mm-hmm. Disney. You're not, like, trying to get around and do things and accomplish as much. You can go in and kind of do a few things, and you're like, okay, I'm good. It's um, nice more and chill. Like, all the, the animals are so cool. So we'll probably end up back there with the next, maybe even our next uh, Florida trip. Yeah, and when your daughter gets older, y'all need to go to Discovery Cove. Yes, we want to do that so bad. I never did it when we were down there, and I've always wanted to. I just think I didn't want to part with the money. I was like, I'd rather spend my money on other things right now. So, um, yeah, then we just ended up back at the resort and kind of had, like, a really chill night because the following day we had another early breakfast reservation. So, So, yeah, we went and... Enjoy the pool for a bit once it stopped raining and all that. That's fun. So how far of a drive was it from your resort to SeaWorld? So the SeaWorld drive with traffic was like 30 minutes. Because okay, normally it would be about 20, but with heavier traffic, it was 30. Mm-hmm. So really not that bad. Um, we used to drive down there like all the time because John actually his favorite place is SeaWorld and Mm -hmm. that was actually where we had our first date oh fun (laughs) so definitely a lot of good memories there so I was like I made him like take some photos like even if it's just a selfie I'm like this is a very full circle moment for us (laughs) that's that's awesome yeah so let's move on and this this would be your last Disney day yeah, this is our last park day. Super sad. Yeah, but always. Definitely glad we only did three days because it's just so much to take in. Mm-hmm. Um, so we had a early reservation at like eight fifty five for Akershus for the princesses. Mm-hmm. Yep. So amazing. I've never eaten there before, so that was a first for me and for all of us. Um absolutely phenomenal the food there is fantastic like I if I hadn't gotten so full I would have been like please bring me more of these waffles with like they have like that like I'm not sure what kind of berry it is but they have like that jam Mm -hmm. and it's really good and I prefer that over like maple syrup um it's really good that's so good Um, yeah so the princesses there that day were um, let's say Aurora and then Snow White and Belle and Tiana and it wasn't Jasmine. Oh, Ariel. It was mm-hmm. Ariel. So my niece was super happy because this is kind of how I had decided to do all our characters was we're going to do meals. We're so not going to try and go seek them out in the parks. It's going to be too much. Mm-hmm. Um, so this was Definitely, like, if it's a busy season, this is the perfect way to see some characters. You're not going to see all the characters, but you're going to get a really good selection. And you're going to get so much more of a personal experience because they take a little more time with you. 
um, like Snow White was playing like peekaboo with my daughter, and my daughter just thought that was the greatest thing. Um, my niece got to have like all her autographs and all. She she actually wore her princess dress that day, and she looked super cute. She she had on like an Aurora dress and the jewelry and everything. She just Aww. it's and she she's like one of those kids who she poses a lot, and so like she's just oh she was so ready for it. It was That's fantastic sweet. because she had asked me I think the day before she was like well, are we going to see any princesses? And I was like, don't worry. I have you covered. Yeah. <laughs> We're not leaving the Disney bubble without seeing princesses. So that was really cool. That's so fun. Yeah. And what's funny is on our way into Epcot, I had thought about trying to like rope drop um, Frozen Ever After. Mm-hmm. We did not do that because it was like, the mad rush of people, once we saw the sea of rope droppers, and we were there with them, right? We were mm-hmm. waiting for everything to uh, to officially open. So we let all those people just go by us, and we hung back. And I had, um, the previous um, night when we had gone to Epcot that first um, park day, I had gotten the scavenger hunts for the Easter eggs and then for Flower Garden. Mm-hmm. And so my niece and I were kind of trying to work on those. Um, so we just like hung out in like Mexico and Norway and like went into China and we're looking at all the topiaries and it's really nice that first thing in the morning, same as Magic Kingdom where you go in and you just look around and you take it all in and especially like with Flower and Garden when they have all the topiaries, like it's, they work hard on those topiaries, Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, because you went to Flower and Garden somewhere yes, recently. Yes, right? that's my and favorite festival. So I think it's yeah, stunning. it's very quickly become my favorite. Yeah. I I just think it's beautiful. The atmosphere feels nice. <laughs> it's not as like like because flower or um, food and wine doesn't have like anything. Yeah, you know, like they have like all the decorations up, but like it's not as peaceful or relaxing. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, the spring is just beautiful, so. And the topiaries, I mean, you can see pictures of them, but seeing them in person and the so details. different. Oh, my gosh. They're like, I really love the topiary that they had this year for Coco um, with Dante, the dog, and he's, like, kind of going up, like, that marigold bridge. And I was just like, because yeah. like, we saw it at night, and then we saw it in the morning, and I was like, it's two very different vibes. And, yeah, I have pictures. They do not do it justice nope. at all. Yeah. So, yeah, it was cool to, like, hang back. And then, because I ended up instead just doing, like, a lightning lane for for Frozen Ever After. Um, And so our lightning lane wasn't until, like, I think, like, 1240 or something. So we had a lot of time to kill after our breakfast. Because even despite the fact that they give you, like, the most amazing experience in there, they get you through that breakfast quick. And I was kind of, like, amazed and stunned because you're like, wait, I feel like I've been here a while. Oh, I've only been here, like, an hour? Yeah. Well, now what do I do? Um, So we went over to World Discovery, um, and we went over and did the Finding Nemo ride. We did that. We went over to Living with the Land, got that out. Um, And then we did the um, Figment Imagination ride because you have to. I love Figment. Oh, because right after that, we met Figment. And that was pretty cool. Because when he first came out, like, his line was, like, hours long. And I was like, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. I love him, but I will wait. (laughs) So that was really cute. Apparently, my daughter, like, had gone, was trying to go up to him, not in the line. And so they gave her, like, one of the little um, autograph cards. I love that they do those now. They're so nice. Like perfect scrapbook item yes. and free, right? Yeah. <laughs> like it's already paid. You don't have to pay anything extra. Um. So that was that was fun meeting Figment. He's so much like I. Sometimes I wonder, like he's so tall. I yeah. expect him to be so little. I know. Big. And I'm like, okay, I guess maybe they just they must have come up with a reason why his imagination is so big, and so he is too. <laughs> yeah, they want to make a big <laughs> statement, I guess. Yeah, so that, that was fun, and my niece did that as well, um, and it's funny because I'm like, she doesn't even realize who he is, so I right. had to, like, explain to her who Figment is, that he's kind of, 
he was sort of the unofficial and now he's kind of become a more official um, Epcot. Uh, mascot. Yeah, mascot. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's still Mickey Mouse, but there's Pikmin for yep. Epcot. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah, that was cute. And then, um, and I think by the time we finished all of that, it was time to uh, head back over for our um, Frozen Ever After Lightning Lane. So, and that was really so much fun. I love that ride. Um, and I guess just so much more relatable, like, for the kids and stuff. Because, like, both my niece and my daughter, like, just they love Anna and Elsa and Olaf. And so they thought that was really cool. I think the only thing that throws them off is, well, my daughter, the when it changes. When yeah. It changes and then goes backwards and then goes forwards again. And she's like hold up people <laughs> this is gonna happen so sassy that's so uh, funny yeah. I uh, love the Frozen ride too because all age kids pretty much know Frozen like my oldest is 18 but when the yeah. movie came out I think he was like in second grade that would have been like 11 years ago now yeah because it came out right at the end of 2013 yeah so he was still young so he kind of grew up with frozen as well um so Uh, i just yeah that's a great ride yeah frozen is like to like our kids generation kind of what like bell and like ariel are to like my generation i think like we all know who they are yes especially because like my generation like we had all the vhs like yes had like every single tape so like I think that's why I like yeah it just it sticks with you so absolutely for sure um so after we finished that um um we headed out because we were kind of feeling the day um how were the crowds we were they they were getting really packed it mm-hmm. wasn't like wall-to-wall people like you still let, feel like you have room but definitely like um so like my nephew he's so funny he would sit in the stroller and then he would get out and he would start running and it's kind of like okay but there's a sea of people yeah <laughs> let's go back or you know maybe ride on dad's shoulders or hold somebody's hand but not charging out into the sea mm-hmm. um so kind of that that's how I would pretty much describe the crowds is like you want to keep your kids maybe a little closer to you yeah. um just because I, I did that when I was little and I was only like I was seven so a little bit older but I had just lost my parents behind me I got really excited about something ran off into the crowd and then realized oh don't know where they are because there's just a sea of people yeah and that's um, something you never forget no, you really don't, because you're mm-hmm. like, I had this moment of not knowing what I was doing. Yeah, it's so scary. <laughs> it's, like, traumatic. Yeah, it was funny. It was actually in the, this was, we were in Disney, it was the animation studio, when it was still the animation uh-huh. studio, and they had, like, all those, it was weird, right, because it's kind of like an exhibit, but then there's, like, actual animators sitting in, like, the, these little cubicle offices with a window, Yeah, and you're like... You don't want to call it a people museum, but that's what it felt like. But I mm-hmm. thought it was the coolest thing because I was like, wow, look at all these artists. This is really mm-hmm. just so cool. Um, and I wish we still had that. I really do. Oh, that's what we did. I forgot. So at Animal Kingdom, we did the animation experience. Oh, yeah. So we that back on Rafiki's Planet Watch. And because my niece being the artist, I had to get her over there. I had to get her to do like one of my favorite things. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we did accomplish another thing in Animal Kingdom. It was the animation experience. That's so fun. <laughs> I, I, love that. I love that. Yeah. Um, so that was really, really cool to do that. And then, yeah, so we, we left Epcot after that, after Frozen. Um, I think some of us were feeling a little just ready ready to go needed Mm -hmm. needed to rest um because we were gonna finish off our day in the evening at magic kingdom so i gave us like this huge chunk of time i think we must have left epcot a little before two probably like 1 30 ish um and we had driven the cars that morning 
um, since we had that reservation and that parking lot. I mean, when you arrive really early, you get right up at the front of that parking lot. So we were in like, I think like the Hey Hey parking lot or something like that. So like really right up front, like behind all the like preferred parking. I'm like, okay, this is good. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So I went back to the resort and just tried to get like some pool time in, get some lunch kind of regroup and get ready for the evening because we didn't end up going into Magic Kingdom until like after seven o'clock I think yeah because well because it was going to be open the until 11 Mm -hmm. so I was like let's go try and do a few rides we can definitely watch the fireworks but we don't have to have like a huge chunk of time um so that worked out really well because again I was like stacking all these these lightning lanes it seemed to work out in a weird way where like the two days that we did lightning lane with Jeannie Claus I would book like one in the morning and that was kind of it like and then a whole a decent amount like in the evening nice Nice. so that worked out good um so in the evening when we went to Magic Kingdom we did take the bus and it was just me and John and our daughter and my niece and my nephew and my brother-in-law and both of my um my mother-in-law and father-in-law um my sister-in-law sat that out she was she was just kind of tapped out for the day so Mm -hmm. I was a little sad because I felt bad leaving her behind but obviously she wanted the kids to have the best time so um yeah we got there probably a little after seven and I think we I had a lightning lane like somewhere between like seven and eight for Big Thunder Mountain and I said let's do a um rider swap because we had the two little ones with us and I was like that way if Morgan my niece really likes this we can do it twice Mm -hmm. um so we did that and so I waited back with um the two little ones and my mother-in-law because she didn't want to ride it um and they came back off the ride and yep my niece was just like that was amazing take me again so (laughs) I got to ride with her which was really cool because it's I don't know you can't really pass up like a an auntie experience getting to do something fun with your niece and like she when we got off the ride she was like that was the best ride of my life and I was like what that was so cool so so yeah so that was really fun and then instead of going into the mass of people we went um because the fireworks were at like eight o'clock odd time for Mm -hmm. closing at 11 I don't like how they do that but it is what it is I think it makes sense because then a lot of people want to get their kids back to bed Mm -hmm. and so if they do them like later yeah (laughs) wouldn't work out so well. So we watched from that bridge between like Tom Sawyer Island, right? The little ferries and um, where like the ferry, um, not the ferry, the riverboat is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So you don't get a perfect view for sure, but you still get the fireworks and you still get the music, but without the mass of people. Cause my daughter doesn't really like the fireworks. It's her least, <laughs> um favorite thing so we kind of have to hang back a little bit with her yeah um just to kind of keep her because if there was like all these people we'd be having to negotiate the the crowds but my mother-in-law was super happy she was like this was amazing she's like how did you know about this and i was like just (laughs) years of experience this is where i used to watch them just for fun i used to watch them over from jungle cruise too because you can still kind of see them and you get the the music piped in um because i used to work at jungle cruise for like five months (laughs) i did that on like the second half of my second um college program fun were you a skipper i was yeah i was skipper yeah oh my gosh so much fun so so intense though because oh, yeah. going on those rides round and round you're like okay I'm tired now <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh that's like, so that's cool so much. yeah that was really cool so yeah the fireworks were perfect as always um I I love happily ever after so much I think it's just it's a really good 
it's a really good fireworks show. Um, and it was cute because, like, my my niece is, like, standing there and doing all, like, these sort of dance gestures and singing along with the music. So she had, like, a lot of space to just sort of be herself. Um, so that was really cute. And then right after the fireworks, we went and we got on uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, which is so great. I, that ride, like, I have such a weird, like, nostalgic feeling with that ride because it's been there so long, mm-hmm. like, probably not a hundred times. But, like, you get to that last room and the smell, like, I'm like, I just want this piped into my house. It smells really good. Yes. <laughs> like better than like a baked cookie smell. Yes. Yeah. My, so that was fun. I think the kids were kind of a little confused about it. Like, what? what is this? <laughs> Classic <laughs> Disney. That's what it is. Yeah, you're Classic. like, this is old Disney. I mean, old Disney's weird. But I think that's yeah. why we like it. Yeah. It's definitely, it's like, you, you have to be there, I guess. But also, here, we're going to pass it on to you. So right. You never, never lose it. It'll grow. Um, right? Yeah. And then from Pirates, we headed back over to Fantasy Land, but more like Storybook Circus. Because mm-hmm. um, we were, I wanted to get my daughter on Barnstormer because I was positive that she was just tall enough. Mm-hmm. So we ended up doing that with her and she her little reaction was the funniest thing she like clung to me and was like mama and then we got off and she's saying bye bye train and I'm just like okay I think you like that (laughs) she says bye to something she likes it (laughs) that's so (laughs) So funny funny. so it was cool to like have that first uh baby coaster experience yeah because that's only like 53 seconds and I'm like okay that's really fast we should be able to do this it'll be fine yeah and it was and so that was pretty cool that's fun yeah and then we went on Dumbo because it was right there and my niece was like we have to go on Dumbo so she got on with her dad and I got on with my daughter and they were just having a great time because at that point my nephew was asleep. He was done. So he he took a nice Magic Kingdom nap in a stroller. And um what did we do after that? We did Buzz Lightyear right after that. No, we did Speedway and then we did Buzz Lightyear. And the Speedway was cool too, because right at the end, because I kept trying to get my daughter to steer, mm-hmm. and right at the end she just said, Okay, I'm ready. Aww. I'm gonna steer. And I was just like, you go girl. That's, That's really cute. So <laughs> did y'all use Genie Plus for this or did y'all just stand in line? We used Genie Plus for all of these except for Dumbo. Okay. Dumbo was just like a really short wait. And most things at that point were pretty short waits, but it was still kind of nice to like skip yeah. <laughs> all the line. Um and even my brother in law was like, Okay, yeah, I get it. Like, you know, yeah, there's like a bit of a line and I just get to go right to the front. And it's like, yeah, it's it's really nice. You feel really special. Yeah. It um, is nice. Yeah, and especially, like, because they can't do, like, a lot of the bigger rides. So, like, my niece was just tall enough for Big Thunder Mountain. So that was, like, okay, we have to do that one because we can't do, like, Space or Tron. Um, We could have done Seven Dwarfs Mind Train, but it was just mad crazy. Yeah. And I was, like, another time. We'll get there. Yeah. Plus, like, I feel like Big Thunder Mountain is such a good intro roller coaster for, like, a kid. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's so much fun. So yeah, then we Speedway and then Buzz Lightyear, and after Buzz Lightyear, we were we were tapped out, and that was it. But the my niece and my daughter had so much fun together at that point because like my daughter watches my niece do things, and it's like I have to do what she's doing. Uh-huh. And more like sisters than they are cousins. So it's super cute watching them sort of interact. And, like, they'd be, like, standing in a line, like, dancing together. And it's like, this is why people should come here and bring their families. Because this is what they're going to get to watch happen. Exactly. It's so special. And when people are like, well, I don't want to take my kids. They're too young. Yeah, I mean... We took never. our kids, they're never too young, but we took our kids when they were older and they still barely remember it. So it's not like, for yeah. them, it's for you. 
the first time we took our daughter, she was like only like four and a half months. Yeah. But it was because my, my parents had cut, gone down and they were bringing my nephew. And I was like, well, I want to go. Yeah. And I was like, we'll just, we'll bring the baby. It'll be fine. So, and they're free. You yes. can't beat that. <laughs> This is the last year that my daughter is free, so she better she better just soak it up because after that I gotta pay for you. Yes, and I mean, even that I will, but it'll be a little different, I you guess. You gotta take advantage of it when they're free. Yeah, for sure. So, y'all just went back to your room and crashed. I'm assuming because it seemed late. Pretty much, yeah. yeah cause I think at that point it was probably like ten o'clock. So we beat that like park closing rush yeah. which was nice. um kind of in the sweet spot yeah yeah especially because like when we got off buzz like it's not too much of a bad walk to the mm-hmm. front and I also I love taking the bus and not going at a time when it's going to be too busy because the bus to Magic Kingdom drops you right off in the front yes you can't get that unless you're staying on like a monorail resort so that's pretty great for sure um, yeah, so yeah, we, we definitely crashed because we were like, okay, we're done. Like, my nephew had already tapped out, like, right after, like, Pirates. And I think both my mother-in-law and father-in-law were like, okay, we're tired. Yeah. This is a lot. And I'm like, okay, now I'm relieved because three park days, it's a lot. Even, like, kind of every other day, it's there's just so much to take in and a lot of walking. I don't think anybody's ever prepared for all the walking. No. There's no way to be prepared. I told my sister-in-law, I was like, bring more than one pair of shoes. Do not rely on one pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. You don't want to switch them out. Yep. Uh, Yeah, so we crashed for a night, and then we got to sleep in a little bit, because the next day we had a Topolino's brunch. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, because we hadn't met Mickey and Minnie or Donald and Daisy yet, and this was this was my uh, flawless plan. That's perfect. <laughs> was, this is how we'll end our vacation is on a really good high note, and everybody was just like so impressed again. And I've only been to Topolino's once before, like two years ago, mm-hmm. um, with um, three of my best girlfriends. And we just couldn't get over the food. It's so good. And how they let you, like, walk out on to that um, terrace out there Mm -hmm. and the views. And you can see, like, just all of Disney pretty much. It's so cool. And, like, the weather was beautiful that day. So that was, it was just really, really nice. And, um, like, even my mother-in-law was, like, getting pictures with, like, Mickey and Minnie and Donald and Daisy. So it was super cute. And she posted some really, really cute pictures of everybody. And my daughter was not impressed, but she was impressed with the food. I was going to say, did your daughter like the characters? (laughs) She was not into it. She liked them from a distance. And it was funny because when they would leave, she was like, okay, bye. Bye -bye." (laughs) Bye-bye. And I was like, okay, you like them, you just don't want them next to you. (laughs) It's kind of funny. Because she's met them before and, like, been so cool with them. And I'm like, okay, something changed. (laughs) Yeah, it's just that age. Yeah, they get funny. I love their costumes in this. um... I absolutely, their costumes are the best. They actually, like, down in the little store in the lobby, they have, like, little, like, keychain versions. And they have, like like full size plush and I'm like do I do I buy all these I haven't yet but one of these days they're all gonna come home with me oh yeah for sure they're so cute (laughs) yeah I love like just mini like and like all the poetry on her dress and then like just Daisy is so cute as a little ballerina they look absolutely amazing yeah it's a great (laughs) really fun to meet because they're so expressive Mm -hmm. so that was that was really just overall, like, not even five stars, like, ten stars. <laughs> so That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And then, so after our brunch, we thought it would be, because it was such a beautiful day, I was like, let's hop on the Skyliner. It's a Disney ride within itself of sorts. Because um, my, my niece, again, was like, are we ever going to go on that? And, like, we can do it right now. <laughs> um so we took the Skyliner over to, like, the Epcot Resort area, 
and we kind of walked around Boardwalk. We didn't really get over to the other side, but Boardwalk has a community hall. Um, so we went back there and we went to the community hall um, and the kids were just kind of having fun relaxing and coloring. They always have a movie playing. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what movie it was playing, but I think my, at that point, John and my father-in-law just sort of crashed on the couch and were <laughs> taking like a, a, a little siesta, uh-huh. <laughs> a little French siesta. Um, and, uh, yeah. And my my uh, brother in law found the uh, they have like one of those like old like arcade games in there. Actually, I think they have like two of them. I don't know what it is. I'm not I'm not a gaming person, but he like hooked it. he got kind of hooked on that for a little bit. So it was, it was just a fun little yeah post brunch afternoon. Um, and then we got back out. We went back to the Skyliner, hopped back up back to Riviera and then it was kind of time to go pack up because my brother and sister-in-law were supposed to leave um, with the kids of my mother-in-law pretty early the next morning Mm -hmm. which was kind of a bummer like their flight was going to be at like six or something crazy like that yeah they were they were going to have to be at the airport at like four and I was like oh you might want to be there earlier even with like you know, like being an early flight. But I think that, yeah, later on that night, he decided to switch their flights to, like, a, a middle-of-the-day flight. That's smart. So was really good. Yeah. But, yeah, it was, like, a really just nice, relaxing last day because then we, once we got back to the resort, we kind of unwinded for a bit and then all reconvened at the pool and the kids were just having the best time Aww. ever yeah they were just like over in the little like um kitty pool area making friends with everybody that was really cute that's really sweet what a fun yeah. way to end the trip yeah yeah i really i'm like can we go back again like <laughs> how do i get you all to like recover and go back right so i can do more well um, that sounds so great so then the next day y'all just headed out yeah, so they headed out, like, shortly after breakfast, so we had all met up to have breakfast, kind of get those last Mickey waffles, yeah. um, and I think they left around somewhere between, like, 10 and 11, I can't remember what time their flight was, and then John and I and my father-in-law and my daughter, we hung around for a while, and we didn't, like, we obviously we had to, like, be out of our room at 11, so we had kind of gotten ourselves out of the room got the car packed up and we went over to the pool to get a little more pool time and to use up some last credits from our meal plan so we um got they have these really good shrimp tacos at the pool bar so good like i would get those every time if i could um um, so that was nice. And then we took all our food over to one of the quiet pools so that my daughter could have a little more um, space to kind of jump in and be a little, mm-hmm. a little crazy. Um, and then we actually got sandwiches to go from the main food court and we just put them on ice and they were good by the time we got to like our hotel for the night, the non Disney hotel. Mm-hmm. Well, right? So sad. Um, but yeah, it was nice to like take that little bit of Disney with us. Yeah, <laughs> to uh, for the road. And I yeah, always that was, that was pretty much it. That's so fun. I always like to take food from either the parks or the resort with me home because it's yep. just like a little. You know, you get home and you eat your little Disney snack, and it's just yeah, crazy. yeah. Like we still have like some Disney candy and stuff, and actually, oh. That's, I had gone off on a separate little um, (laughs) excursion the day before because everybody was done. I wanted to go see all the Easter eggs, Mm -hmm. which I did. Took pictures of like the front and back and like sides of all of them. But I picked up um, some like little Easter treats because with us driving back, we were driving on Easter Sunday and we didn't get back home till Monday. so Easter Monday. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, we're not really doing anything for Easter, but I can pick up Disney treats. So that was really fun. That is real, that's a great yeah. idea. 
Yeah, and then that was when I took my first minivan ever, because I was like, I don't want to hop back on any transportation, so I got my first minivan. Best experience. Oh my goodness. So much better, like, conversation than, like, I have in, like, a regular, like, Uber or Lyft, because you get a cast member, and, like, they kind of, I don't know, they just have a very different vibe than, like, a regular Lyft or Uber, so. Oh, I love the minivans. It was great. Yeah, we use them on every trip at least once. I just love them. Yeah. They're great. (laughs) So... We are at the point of the show where I will ask you what your least magical experience was. (laughs) Probably, ooh, it's so hard to say because I don't really feel like I had anything that really, like, stuck out. But probably, I was a little sad when um, those lightning lanes didn't quite work out and we got the redemption. And, like, the redemption was great. But I was like, okay, we missed Safari, and I missed Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, but I'm like, they'll still be there. So it's yeah. really not, it's not much of a downer. I feel like it's such a minor downer. And then, like, when my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law and my um, my mother and father-in-law were a little frustrated by the bus situation because you're, like, with other people and you're wanting everything to go off, like, very very much without a hitch, and, like, that one bus experience was kind of a little bit of a downer, but we all very much survived because, mm-hmm. like, I don't travel with a big family group that often. Um, usually it's just, like, me and John and my daughter, mm-hmm. and so I was like, okay, what is what? how are we going to leave this vacation feeling? And Everybody left feeling so good. That's so, so good. I was like, this is great. Yeah. What was your most magical moment? Oh, I think when my niece told me that that was like the best ride of her life coming off Big Thunder Mountain and just getting to do that with her, mm-hmm. that was just really cool. And overall, the whole trip, like, because every once in a while I'd be looking at like everybody's reactions to things. Yeah watching all their facial expressions and I swear my niece looks like she could have been a Disney advertisement Aww. like just like that genuine real smile and like just super happy laughing at things just she had such a great time and it really like I had actually made her like this little booklet and so she could kind of like keep track of her trip mm-hmm. and like she could write down like her favorite activity of the day and draw like a picture of like her favorite thing that day and it had like a little bit of coloring in it and stuff and like a Magic Kingdom scavenger hunt, which she did really good on. And I was like, I'm impressed by you. Nice. So, yeah. It was it was very much her trip. So definitely the highlight was just getting to see her like live through that and kind of feel like a kid again myself. And I was like, okay. Mission accomplished. She's been happy. <laughs> oh, that's so special. I love it. Yeah, definitely. I gotta, I gotta kind of bend their elbows and let me do it again, and maybe eventually, like, let me take her like on a girls' trip. Yes. So we'll that see what they fun. say. <laughs> yes. I mean, they, yeah. she's already got to go with them, so now it's time for her just to get to go with you. Yeah. <laughs> so, is there anything else you want to say before we end the show about your trip? Um, I can't really think of anything. I think, so we really enjoyed the dining plan, the quick service dining mm-hmm. plan. But so for our upcoming trip, we decided we're doing the table service because we feel like the value is probably so much better on that. Because we found that there was like a couple of days where like our credits kind of lagged. We managed to use them all at the end of the trip. Yeah. Yeah. Good. But, um. I think, like, the table service is going to be, like, so much better because we we did have, like, sit-down meals, and so, like, we had set, like, aside, like, a certain amount of money on, like, gift cards to use on the Mm -hmm. sit-down, which worked out really well. Like, I'm pretty good at that, like, sort of Disney math and all the planning and the budgeting and stuff, so I did really well with that, but um, that prepay, right? You don't even think about it. You're like, okay. Take my credit. That's fine. It's so nice. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. And I look forward to hearing what you think about the table service dining plan. Definitely. We'll have to reconvene after this one. Yes. I'll take care of it. <laughs> for sure.
right. Thank you so much, Jenny. It's been really fun. That's a wrap on today's show. As always, thanks for listening. Make sure to visit us on Instagram at Disney Travel Tales. If you're wanting to support the show, the best and easiest way to do that is to leave a five-star positive review on Apple Podcasts. It's so easy and means the world to me. Can't wait to be back next week with you. So until then, this is Jenny, and may all your Disney travel dreams come true.